Welcome back to the Best Boys Podcast, a podcast where we talk about things that don't really have much relevance, or not, they have relevance, they don't have much impact on the world as a whole. No, we are Which not. Is, that's why we do it. Yes. We're not, we're not going to talk about Afro Levine dying in 2003 and being replaced with a clone. Nor Tupac living in Cuba. But we are going to talk about <laughs> Superman. I'm Preston. <laughs> And I'm Jeremy. <laughs> um, yeah, welcome back. Another week of this. Of absolute chaos. It'll be better than last week. Last week was a little bit messy. It was a little bit messy. It was nice and short and sweet, though. Yeah. Um, this week, though, be prepared to get slapped in the face by Donald Duck's... <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what I was thinking about today? <laughs> what were you thinking about today? <laughs> I'll, I'll, you know the difference between jelly and jam? What? Do what's, you, though? What's the difference? No. One of the seeds? Is that it? Or is it just a joke? <laughs> I can't jelly my dick in your ass. <laughs> Alright, Oh my god. Welcome back. That's a start. Welcome back. Oh man. Uh, yeah, Superman. Superman's is being in the news. He's re- being rebooted. Uh, there's allegedly. Re- no, he's being rebooted. <laughs> that's not. That's not alleged. Confirmed. The allegedly is that it's Calvin Ellis and not Clark Kent. Interesting. So that's why people are looking back at Michael B. Jordan again, which I think is perfect. I yeah. I mean, look no further. Yeah. Like that. I don't think it's. I mean, I'm sure there is another option. Yeah, you know? but. but uh, but when you have one that good. And, I mean, Boss Logic's already made a fan art of him. So, so it'll happen. So it'll happen. So that means DC contacted. Actually, he hasn't really worked with DC. He works more with Marvel. He hasn't. I don't think he's influenced DC as much. And he ha- he's worked officially with Marvel. I don't yeah. think he's worked with, actually worked with DC at all. Because he did Endgame posts yeah. for Marvel. And he did Homecoming stuff, too. For, like, DVD yes. releases yeah, yeah. on Australia or something. Yeah. Uh, but... I do think... He still, he's has influence on everything. But uh, Michael B. Jordan specifically will be interesting, just in, if, if they bring him back for Black Panther two. Yeah, which well, feels like the right move. He is uh, producing Static Shock. That's confirmed. That was news yeah. that came out a month or two ago. So he is involved with DC properties slash willing yeah. to be. He also he played uh, Cyborg in Flashpoint. He voiced him. Oh, interesting! I didn't know yeah. that. Um. So he's done DC stuff, obviously. Oh, and like a name as big as him, even if he hadn't done it before, yeah. obviously he has. He yeah. can get someone on the phone at DC. Um, so very down for that. Off the top of your head, can you think of anybody else? If if we're going, Calvin Ellis. It, uh, do one for Calvin Ellis. Do one for Clark. Uh, if it's Calvin Ellis, I would be down with. Uh, John David Washington. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah, think yeah. He, I think he'd be good. I would like my he. I want him to be Harvey Dent for Robert Pattinson, oh, Batman. Oh, I think hey. I think that's a good one. And it's like, already we know they have chemistry, yeah, yeah. and I think it's very important for Harvey Dent to be established as a charming guy and a friend of Bruce before Def- he be, gets two faced. Maybe more than one movie. Definitely more than <laughs> definitely more than half a movie. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's yeah. And <laughs> even in the Dark Knight, he wasn't. They weren't established as friends. They were only friends through Rachel. No, like they only they interacted through Rachel. Yeah. Which was its own little space yeah, of interest. For sure, it, it, it worked. But I think having yeah, I don't think we I don't think we're taking shots at the Dark Knight. Yeah, I oh absolutely not. <laughs> I think having Batman be like, like how he works with Gordon, and have him work with Harvey Dent too. Like be willing, like be like, okay, there's two people in law enforcement I trust. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that would be very interesting. But no, I uh, I think he, I think John David Washington would be good. Do you have one for Calvin Ellis? Um, I would. I like the. Uh, I was going to say Idris Elba, but one, he's already in DC, and two, he's too old, yeah. I think. I- unless uh, we are introduced, because it could be interesting if they did both. We get an origin story for one, and then the other has already been doing his thing. So, you, like, if you have the older, uh, what do they, does he, does he have a different name, or is he still Superman? He's still yeah. Superman, but his uh, Kryptonian name, I believe, if I'm correct, is Val Zod. He's Val a Zod, Zod. Yes, he's, 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 he's a Zod. Um, so, no. 
but I like your answer, but I can think of one. Do you have any just off, like... For Clark Kent? Clark Kent. Um, I mean, the, there's the classic Matt Bomer, because that dude looks exactly true. like Henry Cavill. Yeah, he's got the... He, he looks like a... Like... Um, not not and not saying Henry Cavill is not pretty, but Matt Bomer feels like a prettier. He's a pr- Henry yes, Cavill. He is a more conventionally pretty. Boy. Like he looks like you'd see him walking down the runway for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's very much runway model as opposed to like. I don't even know what. British. <laughs> um. Yeah, I. No, but I like the idea of it being Val Zod because we get. We're getting Tyler Hoechlin in and the sh- Clark and Clark Lois, Lois, and it seems to already be taking very well after yeah, this pe- one episode. People like his. I, I I'm not gonna watch it because I'm done with CW shows. But the clip I watched of him in the the them recreating the scene from the first with cover, the PT Cruiser, <laughs> which, which is such a. It was a very fun. Yeah, and, and, he, he, and he, he has the suit that his mom made, and he him, has, which is nice. He has That's the en- he has the energy of su- what Superman should have. I love Henry Cavill as Superman, but he's not. That, like you don't start Superman being grim, you had to build up to that. You had to build up to him having to kill Zod and it changing his life. Yeah, whereas he already looked like someone that would kill people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The first time we see him as an adult uh, in the oil rig scene, yeah. it's like that's not very Superman. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, I don't know. I'm very open to this though. J.J. Abrams is attached, so that sounds good. He he's got his hands in a lot of things because he's also attached to the Constantine show. Mm-hmm. What's happening? Have you heard about that one? Mm-hmm. Is that HBO? So, yes, an HBO Max show. It is not the Justice League Dark show that was that's been talked about. So it seems like they're going to build up to that, which is fantastic. Smart. And they're looking for somebody in their mid twenties to play Constantine. Uh, and they they said they're based off Riz Ahmed. Is there? And I think just get Riz Ahmed. He'd yeah. be great. Yeah. Yeah, it's the the Allison Brie like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like just no, get, just get them. <laughs> well, really. So what I think. I don't think the Alison Brie thing. I think is still dirty because she said multiple times she would do a Marvel project. So it's like, ah, you didn't ask her. Yeah. But I think what they were kind of implying is that if they can get Riz Ahmed, they're gonna get Riz Ahmed. But if not, they want somebody in the same vein as him, Got a it. person of color. They've said specifically, which is I'm totally yeah. down with. Yeah. And British. Guess like get a British actor and let them actually be British. Yeah, that would be crazy. Um. Interessante. Yeah, and also give him something better after Venom. <laughs> yeah, wow. I forgot about that movie. Even though we were just talking about the infamous soundtrack. Yep. Um, shout out Eddie Mathers. Um, uh, what was the other piece of news that popped this week? Oh, one quick thing I want to talk about, slightly news, is the... And this will probably segue into the main topic, but... Yeah. Zack Snyder said that he, in his initial plans for Justice League, there was a romance between Bruce Wayne and Lois Lane. What? Which is just, like, that's just wrong. That, that That's another thing for me where it's like, I, I've i enjoyed, except for all of Zack Snyder's movies that he's put out, I've enjoyed them. Every Zack Snyder movie I've seen, I've enjoyed. I've at least had a good time. Yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm not, not saying they're... I'm, yeah, I'm not on the same page, but... I'm not saying they were a good movie. Yeah. I think the only one I haven't seen is Sucker Punch, maybe? I've not seen Sucker Punch. But, like, Sucker Punch seems like it would have... <laughs> uh, <laughs> seems like it would what? <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> no, uh, go ahead. <laughs> but, like, that is a fundamental misunderstanding of Bruce Wayne. Yeah. I, yeah. Like, well, I don't and know much Lois, about... Uh, yeah, I would say Lois is very... Yeah. Very faithful to Superman. <laughs> well, faithful and also, like, there's a world where uh, pre dating clark or dating superman lois is like all like she's she's famous you know so she dates celebrity level i mean she's dating superman you know but uh so like her interacting with someone like bruce wayne pre-clark is not like out of nowhere no but months after he dies (laughs) and also like for bruce wayne yeah that's weird that's like Especially since he treats Superman as like complete opposite as he did in the previous movie, where he was like, "Oh, Jesus has died." You it's know? Like, like if your best friend died, and you're like, "Um, oh, wait a couple months and date his girlfriend." Yeah, <laughs> like, dude, have you seen the movie Brothers? I watched that a few weeks ago. Who, who's it with? Who? Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal and Tobey Maguire. No, I haven't even heard of it. So Tobey Maguire, just quick rundown, spoiler alert for Brothers, but I, I won't fully spoil, but. Uh, Tobey Maguire is married to Natalie Portman, has two daughters. 
the day before he leaves for a uh, deployment in the Middle East in military, he Jake Gyllenhaal, his brother, younger brother, gets out of jail for some for B and E. He picks him up. They have a nice family dinner. There's obviously tensions with their father and like the family, and everybody hates Jake Gyllenhaal because he's yeah, of mom. course. And then you, you got you got to make yeah. make sure those criminal characters are very <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. And then he gets deployed. His ship gets blown up. He dies in uh, somewhere in the Middle East military. I think he's a Marine. And then Natalie Portman and Jake Gyllenhaal start like hanging out a little bit. Like Jake Gyllenhaal, he he like he remodels their kitchen. He's like doing favors. Yeah. He's like taking the kids to school. The the kids like him. He's he's the fun uncle, you know. Uh, they kiss once. And that's all that happens. I thought they were gonna be schlonging. I really did. Like the the <laughs> there was a lot of prelude to that, and I was like, they are definitely gonna yeah. But then it turns out Tobey Maguire is not dead. I was gonna say the twist. Yeah, the twist yeah. is that he's not dead, yeah. right? And he has been a prisoner of war. Oh, a la Tony Stark, where he does he break out with an Iron Man suit? He's been brain not brainwashed, but he's been like tortured. Like they like, I think they snip his testes off. They're oh, burning no. him with a stick. I think they shove it up his ass like an iron, like a pitchfork Ouch. iron, it, like in a fire, and just like all sorts. Of, and it's him and his cadet or the office, some officer beneath him. Yeah, and they make him kill his comrade. Yeah, they're like they're like gun to his head. They're like you beat him to death or you die, and like. It's much oh. more complicated than that. Like, oh. they break him down. He doesn't do it. Yeah, anything. yeah. But still, messed up. The U.S. finds the camp, breaks it up, saves him, brings him back. He's obviously a completely different person. He sees what's the chemistry. Does he kill Jake Gyllenhaal? I don't want to spoil the movie. Yeah, so he kills Jake Gyllenhaal. I haven't no. seen the movie. Spoil the movie. He- Spoilers for brothers. So he doesn't kill Jake Gyllenhaal. He gets in a large, loud... Loud, loud, Louch. large <laughs> argument with Natalie Portman. Jake Gyllenhaal busting through the front door because she had texted him. He calls the cops. They're all yelling at each other. Toby just randomly pulls a gun out of nowhere, and you're like, oh, my God. And then the cops are outside. They're pointing the guns at Toby. They're all in the driveway yelling. They're screaming. At then he starts pointing the gun at his own oh, head and then pointing it at the cops and then pointing it. Oh, so he, gets, it, he, he dies? No. He points a gun at a cop and they didn't shoot. Uh, he's white. He's white. Uh <laughs> And, and it's, like, kind of small-town vibes, too. So, uh, not an excuse. But, well, I mean, they, n- anyways. Keep going. Different subject. <laughs> uh, he says a line uh, that was previously mentioned in the movie because when uh, they were kids, Jake John Hall was drowning in a river, and then Ted McGuire saved him, like, when they were, like, eight or something. Yeah. And he just turns at Jake Gyllenhaal and he's like, I'm drowning, Jake, or whatever his name is. And then they just both start crying and like hug each other and then a gun drops. And it's actually like very touching. And then it flash forwards five months to him coming out of a mental hospital. And he tells Natalie Portman what happened, like that he killed that guy. And also we meet the wife of that guy who has a kid who's named Joe Jr. after the father. Dirty. (laughs) Oh, just (laughs) heart-wrenching everywhere. And it just ends with Tobey Maguire saying something like, I wonder if I'll learn to live again or something like that. Jeez, why did you watch this? It's so <laughs> dark. I was just like, it just looks like a good movie. He's on Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah, like, Hell yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good God. What a tangent. Back to the topic that brought up you explaining this film. That's not how Batman <laughs> would act. No, it's not. And I would also like to think it's not how a younger brother would act. But eh. <laughs> but also, it's not like anything actually happened between them. So like... Jake Gyllenhaal's not sliding in on Natalie Portman. Batman should not be sliding in on <laughs> Lois Lane. That's all I have to also, say. Also, but like, also, that's a big thing for me with Zack Snyder's vision. There are so many people you can give Batman as a love interest. It should not ever be Lois Lane. If you want to give him Lois Lane, give him Vicky Vale. Yeah. She is Lois Lane. Yep. And if you want to make it, like, interesting, well, eh, I don't know. Like, just make up a new character like write her in previously make it iris west like that's still just as messed up and wouldn't happen but like and she's much younger <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> at least in this yeah um yeah it's all when it's like the same thing when dark knight rises came out and he was doing man of steel and he famously said oh if i was doing a batman it would be actually dark and gritty not this like he essentially called nolan's batman not dark and gritty which is famously created the dark and gritty trend yeah and uh, 
made references to how Batman would be in jail and be assaulted in jail and just all sorts of things that are so unnecessary. And also like, dude, you're a white, rich director in Hollywood. Don't pretend that you like white, rich Christian director in Hollywood. Because if we look at this photo that we will insert right here. Joker, Joker no, Christ. You, you mean the poster we have oh, yeah. of Jesus H. Christ. <laughs> Joker Christ. Yeah, Joker Christ. Well, yeah, we, I mean, that image came out, too, this last week. Yeah, good God. Joker the Christ. crown of thorns. Uh, Joker. Which, there is nothing that, ex like, there's no, no. explanation. Because uh, Superman doing, like, the on the cross T-pose in the sky when he's flying. Sure. Or, like, even, I'll like, give, I'll give Superman it to walking through a crowd and people acting like he's the Messiah. It's like, okay, that's... Because it's still a stretch. When Superman has always been a Christ analogy since the 1930s, yeah. like he's that's always been his thing. So it makes more sense. But Joker, I mean, it, it's interesting. Zack Snyder, an obvious religious person, choosing that character to be the Jesus. Figure. Yeah. It's a very interesting yeah, choice. That's that's, that's that says a lot. That says a lot about that. Does say society. a lot about society. Yeah, I mean, really, it does say a lot about society. <laughs> Uh, but yeah. Uh, speaking of Zack Snyder, before we go on the what we wanted to talk about for like the big topic today, you watch the trailer for his zombie movie? No. Tra I think it's Day Dawn of the Dead, something of the Dead. I heard about it. It's set in Vegas. I didn't know it was oh, set in yeah, Vegas. Yeah, I saw. Trailer. I saw a screenshot of it. I'm, I didn't. I didn't watch that. I will. I, so I love a fun zombie movie. Zombie Land. Give me a fun zombie movie, and I'll watch it. This seems like it'll be a fun zombie movie. And it wasn't it's also, shot here though, right? No. Because it's destroyed Vegas. It's like probably like CG years Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but give me a movie that's not like a rom com. I mean, I'll watch the occasion. Like what happens in Vegas, I'll watch the shit out of what happens in Vegas. But <laughs> a movie set in Vegas, me born and raised here, I will watch it like so hard. You're a big, uh, you're a big Todd Phillips guy. So that makes sense. <laughs> I do, I do love the first Hangover. <laughs> I mean, the Hangover is a good movie. Like all everything aside, like negative, but like it's it's funny. Like now you see me. <laughs> yeah, um, now you seen me. <laughs> Put it back up. <laughs> I do. Like, I I love now you see me. Uh, there's a ton of them. oceans. So, oh, the oceans. Oceans movie? is great movie. Just regardless. Yeah, oh, absolutely. But also ocean oceans and Hangover and like those movies where Vegas is a character makes it fun for people to like visit exactly. like, this is the where they but watch then also it's it's fun too is if they do it right it's like being from Vegas it's like oh that's I know where that is yeah. like that's just a fun like Oceans definitely did it right yeah, 100%. yeah Oceans did it right I think Now You See Me did it right too even though they weren't there the whole time the stuff in Vegas is fun uh, have you seen the vampire movie set in Vegas no um I will put it up on the screen because I can't think of the name okay. it's uh it's like a teen movie where he finds out his neighbors. It's Fright Night. Uh, it's mm. uh, who's the guy that's playing the penguin? Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell is the vampire. He's neighbors with the teenage kid. So it's it's very like rear window meets uh, like Goonies type teenage hijinks. Okay. Uh, but instead of the neighbor being a murderer, he's a vampire. And he's like all flirty with the kid's mom. And then he's like, this guy's kind of sus. He's only out at night. Yeah. Da, da, da. But then like, so is his mom. Cause she works at the strip as like a cocktail waitress or something. So that's like the excuse, it, but it definitely doesn't do Vegas. Right. Because I, but that's also fun. It, it's also fun, but it essentially paints Vegas as like the strip. And then 30 miles South is like the suburb. a, a yeah. suburb. That's just a box by itself. Like, like it's literally like an expansive desert. Like, and, and then this neighborhood, like when they used to be like Hoover towns, when the yeah, strip first started. Exactly. Being built. Yeah. They, it's like that, but it's still like 2013 yeah. or whatever. Interesting. I, uh, yeah, Kid Cudi did the soundtrack. Is that why you watched it? Yes. Yes. Well, nice. cause the music video, he's like a vampire. And I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> But pretty okay movie. Yeah, but like, yeah, that's just like I'll watch. It's coming to Netflix. Zack Snyder's zombie mm. movie. So it's like I'll watch it. It's I have a Netflix subscription. I will be watching it. Simple yeah, as that. I am logged into a Netflix subscription, so and I will probably watch it as yeah, well. <laughs> I mean, you got access. Yeah. Uh, before again, once once more, I will say before we dive into our big topic, you see the Paramount Plus stuff they announced. Yes. Almost seems worth it. Yeah. Like yeah. this Paramount is another has one. a lot of stuff. Paramount has a lot of stuff where I'm like workaholics movie. Very excited about Halo that. Halo TV show. Ooh. 
people did not hear about the that. Halo TV show has been was gonna originally be on sh- air on Showtime. It's been in works for a while, but they announced it's Paramount Plus exclusive now. That's cool. Avatar getting its own Avatar show. Avatar Studio. Yes. Um, which is huge. We'll get a new sh- movie. A- is the first thing I think they announced. Yeah, they're, 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 yeah a, a theatrical movie, and then I think a show for Paramount Plus, right? Yeah. So very excited for that. Absolutely. And it's the original creators. Yes. They left the Netflix project for this. But and it's still animation. Yes. Yes. It's okay. So series. I'm excited for that because I love Avatar. I'm okay with the Netflix series, whether it's going to be bad or not. I'm It'll, gonna I'm gonna watch at least the first season. It's gonna be better than the Shyamalan. I guarantee you. I I guarantee you it's gonna be better yeah. in, in in like most, if not all, yeah. respects. Whether that means it's still good is up in the air. But it's gonna be enjoyable to an I extent. I'm. I'm. Did you hear the age change that they're doing? Oh yeah, like Katara's like 25 or well, something. She's, I think she's 16 now. And Aang's and 12. Aang's 12 so. still, and uh, Soka's 14 now. So Soka's the younger brother now. Interesting. Uh, I think they're doing that. So that so him and Aang do... are going to be even better friends and yeah. he's still going to put his sister. No, I don't. I, I think they're doing it so they can do Zuko and Katara to, get, to appease oh. those fans. Oh. See, here's my problem with that. Fandom, I have an issue with. Just Which like those types of fans. Yeah, but maybe. also, I don't dislike that story. It works. It can work. It can work 100%. But my big thing is it's it Raylo. did it. It but but it, first of all, it's Raylo better. Yeah. It is. But they did it, it. it makes sense. <laughs> they didn't do it. Move on is my big thing. So that's why I'm kind of again the whole the whole fandom thing. It's like yeah, you're gonna listen to the fandom and risk the quality of the show because of it. Um, I I don't actually hate that though, especially if they if the because obviously if that's the case, then then they're not doing episode for episode page by page to screen type action so i would rather see if it's not a faithful adaptation a different take on the story that's still well done uh still same start point same end point but change the journey yes which is fair because like it could make it interesting yeah and that's what they do with like a lot of marvel movies yeah yeah i mean like look at civil war compared to or any of the origin movies like the closest one we have is probably Captain America and Iron Man, just because they're, they're so simply kind, yeah. like that. But I mean, speci- specifically Captain America. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's really no other way to do it. But um, man, isn't that crazy to think one day they'll have to do him with like Vietnam or something? I mean, no. Actually, I guess no, because he's frozen in ice. Well, yeah. I that that's what we were talking about with like with Magneto. Magneto that'll have that to change. It, it gets harder, it, but like. Again, it doesn't have to. They, 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 they could come up with a caveat because of how important the Holocaust is. To they could story. also just say that they put him in f- frozen carbonite jail for 50 years. Yeah. You know, yeah, like he, he did something a- in the 60s, you know, and then they're like, freeze this guy. <laughs> <laughs> freeze him. <laughs> that was Nixon. At the time. <laughs> freeze him. <laughs> so let's dive in to uh, something. So we got... WandaVision ends next week. We'll have we'll, we'll be reviewing WandaVision next week. Snyder. Maybe next week, maybe the week after if there's a secret episode. I don't think there's a secret episode. Uh, everything I've seen, I've, I saw a leak that was the runtime for next week's episode that was apparently it's 50 minutes, which is two more minutes than this last episode, which is worrisome, but I digress. <laughs> uh, but we have that coming out, so we should, barring any unforeseen circumstance, it should be next week that we're reviewing it. Yes. Uh, yeah. And then we got Snyder Cut coming out end of next month along with... Con- so we've got... All of these things being said, fandom has been very loud. Yeah, fandom. That's, I mean, that's the subject today is just uh, society. Yes, society. What society says about us and what we say about society. I think it's just interesting uh, not to get like woke or like fake deep, but just the role that the internet plays in Hollywood productions. Especially now, like, especially with... Yeah. I, and again, like, I feel so corny being like, well, because of social media, like, I feel like a dumb boomer being like, oh, you can't say anything anymore. It's not flying. Like, but it's like, it's weird. I think a lot of it has to... Anyway, yeah, we're going to be fake deep this whole time. Yeah. I think yeah. a lot of it has to play into the fact that this stuff has become so mainstream. Yeah. This stuff happening when... Because remember, like, even when Iron Man came out, it wasn't, like people weren't freaking out and super excited about it. No. it. It took until like Avengers. Yeah. It was it was probably 3 or 4 years before the MCU actually like had a foothold. Yeah, and before it clicked in modern audiences that it would cuz like mostly like even when Avengers was coming out, it would be like Joe America sees a trailer for it at the Super Bowl and goes, "Oh, that's the same guy that was in the uh Captain America movie that came out last year." Yeah. Cool. 
And then that's it. You yeah. know, it's not even, yeah. Whereas now, that same person is like, oh my God, he must be Mephisto. <laughs> yeah. Because like, they didn't know, Kevin Feige didn't know that they were doing the MCU when Iron Man ended. They tossed Nick Fury in the end as a Hail Mary yeah. in hopes that they could continue. Yeah, so I think the... And we should be careful because they did plan ahead. I, but you're right. It was post Iron Man, but pre Avengers. Yes. Because we, yeah. we will, I mean, we won't get comments, but uh, we could get comments <laughs> about that. Um, I mean, give us comments. About yeah, that. please comment. Prove us wrong. Um, but yeah, I. So you're right. It's because it's so mainstream, is why the people, the voices are louder. Yeah. And then there's people like Boss Logic who. Love to that man, like great, great person. Yeah, but he has so much influence because all of the fans love what he's doing. That he does something in, like it's official now with Ahsoka specifically. He does something, and the studios are like, "Oh, everybody likes that." Yeah, let's do it. Like yeah. he, like even Rosario Dawson has even said he got her cast. He went hunt. D- Dave Filoni said he reached out to Rosario Dawson because of the Boss Logic fan art, and it's like. That's wild. That's crazy. And it feels dangerous. <laughs> it's a lot of power for one man to wield. It fe- and I'm like, do what you got to do. But I feel like there's some of them that sh- sh- don't always listen to the fans. Yeah. Because sometimes you are gonna, the studios are going to know what fans want more than the fans know. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's tough, too, because also the a lot of times the people that are the most vocal are not necessarily the people to be listening to because I'd like to think that I could like if Kevin Feige walk up to me and ask me like three casting questions, I'd like to think that I have a good idea for certain characters. Yeah. Some characters not like I, I don't have a specific love for like Scarlet, Witch, for example, like if he came up to me before age of Ultra, I'd be like, I don't really know redhead, I guess like I don't, you know, yeah. like I wouldn't have much to say. But if he came up to me and was like, who would you cast as? I mean, uh, uh, pretty much all the ones that I really care about have already been cast. But I feel like I could say something about the Fantastic Four. Or or, if you have to do a specific X-Men question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I I would have at least, I would, like, if you asked me about Wolverine, Wolverine, I would have ideas, but I'd be like, but... I trust your judgment. Yeah, You've done exactly. it right like 20 <laughs> times, if not more. That's exactly it. It's like you can't, like some of them, I'm, I'm, there's some castings that I'm not crazy about in the MCU. I'm not, like nothing specific right now, but like. Some are better than so, others. Some are better than others, others for sure. But then you have like, to- all right, Robert Downey Jr. is Tony Stark. It's like that casting. Which, shout out, there. Ca- there's a specific casting director, a lady. Who yes, is, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pull up her name. Yeah. We, she, cannot, we cannot not say her name. Yeah, because she's done a lot she of them. She killed did, it. Yeah. yeah, she's done the big ones. She did like Thor, Captain America, Iron Man, like the ones that people love. Yeah, it's... She, and, and like Thor? I, like, are you kidding me? Like, that's... it's per- Like, I'm sure, that, again, someone else could have done Finn. it. Sarah Finn. Sarah Finn. Shout out Sarah Finn. She has been on board since Iron Man. Yeah. And Uns- she, unsung hero yeah, absolutely. of the MCU. She... she her with Kevin Feige and probably early days John Fav- John Favreau definitely had saying he played yeah. Junior yeah uh, but her and Kevin Feige specifically it's like the two of them they're they know what they're doing and they've proven that with so many like like you said Thor like Thor Chris Hemsworth was an unknown yeah we were vaguely yeah yeah, yeah that's why I use yeah, the air yeah. quotes yeah, 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 sorry yeah. audio listeners can't hear the air yeah. quotes <laughs> uh, he he was not nearly as big as. Robert Downey, like he had no, oh, he wasn't no. known really. No, like he, like was, he, he the, was, he was famous in Australia because yeah. he was on uh, Neighbors, and that was yeah, it. he was in the Australia scene. So it's like taking that chance and be like, this guy's Thor. Looking at him now, it's like I can't see. Like Thor is one of the ones where I can't see anybody else's Thor. No, like you no. can't, not at all. Um, he also like, yeah, and like even even uh, like Captain America, Chris Evans, like John Krasinski was up for the role. Maybe it could have worked, but there's no way, nothing in my mind uh, could change Chris Evans' face like from the that. Dude, the dude who played Bullseye in season three was up was for, up for yeah. it as well. And it's like, maybe, but like now I don't, like I, I see that guy as Bullseye. He was a great Bullseye. Yeah. But now, like, Chris I can't Evans see. is Captain yeah. America. Yeah. Which is how it should be. Like, you, that's what these castings should mm-hmm. do to fans. Like, in the same way that, a lot of people much older than us will never see Christopher Reeves, anyone besides Christopher Reeves as Superman. Yep. Fair enough. That's the same. I mean, same with Christian Bale. And, I feel. And Christian Bale. Oh, for sure. Christian Bale. 
people that that one's hard for me because it's like i love i love the dark knight movies they're so they're very fun to watch maybe not dark knight rises but that's not that's not comic book batman that's a very no, realistic it, grounded batman it's and it's the it, dark knight batman it definitely it's, it has its merits and it's fun to watch even as a batman fan there are some things about it that are absolutely great but then you like i personally this is me at this point talking just all from speculation i think robert pattinson is going to do everything that we want from a batman i and, hope so and so i, I am so. i'm very excited for that as a batman fan but i understand why people have latched on to chris christian bale i almost said christopher nolan mm. but he directed that movie but christian bale more so than anything and like henry cavill with the snyder fans specifically yeah well and, and henry cavill's tough too because even though I don't necessarily agree with that vision of Superman, he does physically look great as Superman. Yeah, like and he, then, he fits the mold very and well. And then, like, in there are a few scenes in Batman versus Superman where he smiles in the Superman costume, where it's like, you could it, be so good. Yeah, you could you could be the ideal positive Superman. Yeah, yeah. If we could just move past you murdering people. Yeah, yeah. But and, and then that I think moves into the Snyder Cut, which obviously is both histor historic because of like the way that it happened, and also questionable because Snyder Cut as a movement, one they are also specifically not naming it. It's it's Zack Snyder's Justice League, it is not, not the, the Snyder Cut. It is which... not the Snyder Cut because that movement is so toxic and horrible, yeah. and like which smart PR move, but also. If there's definitely like there are people there are people who like Zack Snyder's movies that are not and would like to see his version of the Justice League that are not part of the Snyder yeah, cut. No, 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 like, of course. Yeah, of course. That, that, like, that's I, what's... I'm excited to well, excited's a strong <laughs> word. I was excited when it got announced about it happening. But yeah, it's not mutually exclusive. Liking Snyder's work does not make you a bad person. Liking the Snyder cut being made does not make you a bad person. But harassing it, actors and stuff because like yeah it's harassing actors being extremely vocal about the wrong things and yeah it's just it says a lot about society that's really yeah. it unfortunately is what this topic comes up to it's just society but then like also with wandavision currently it's like a very different type of weirdness of fandom because that personally i think well, for a lot of people the fan theories and stuff on tiktok have hyped this show up to be so much more than it actually is going to be. It, yeah, because we, we were all ready for a giant Mephisto, Doctor Nightmare, Strange, something, yeah. something reveal, but now it's just kind of be like, oh yeah, it was the first guess that we had. Spoiler alert for episode eight, just small spoiler alert if you're not... It was... <laughs> it was Agatha all okay. along. <laughs> okay. uh, but like, just the small stuff, I don't think... I think maybe we'll get a post credit scene that reveals Nightmare or something. I think we've already set up the antagonists for the finale. Like, I don't there's think... No there's no way it's more there's than There's two her. of them. Yeah. There's two of them. Like, yeah. I just... It's very much... And that's when... That one's really hard for me because it's like... I, ne I never thought it was going to be Mephisto because this is... I hoped it would be because that would have been cool. This show is a prolonged... Prologue for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse Madness. Yeah. And the future of Scarlet Witch. And the future of Scarlet Witch, which who knows what will happen with that. Yeah. Because Ma apparently... Maybe they'll get a second season. I don't think they will. Like, uh, it would, I be, it I would be a very different yeah, I show. Think, I think she might get... I Like, who knows what's going to happen with Vision at the end yeah. of this because it's very up in the air. I think she might get her own show. I don't think it'll be WandaVision, though. Fair, fair. I guess that's what I meant. Yeah. yeah. Like, I think there could be another show called, like, The Scarlet or Witch. Or maybe they call it WandaVision just to keep the hype around it. But... Yeah, I don't think they would need to though. A mess. I mean, much like the man, Snyderverse. Yeah, society. Society is a mess. That's the message we've came for you. That society, could, that's a good title. Society is a mess. Or society is Mephisto. Mmm. Title. <laughs> there it is. It's like that you know, when uh, Will Smith said, "What are we? Some kind of suicides? society?" <laughs> <laughs> he, he walks up wearing Joker makeup. <laughs> what are we some type of society <laughs> it's just jared leto's voice not even his joker voice his voice that he's using in the snyder cut uh, but yeah unless we get some miracle of episode 10 of wandavision yeah we'll or be. they randomly drop doctor strange too <laughs> <laughs> there's 
still filming yeah, it. Yeah, there's no way that happens. Uh, but yeah, we will be talking about that probably all of next week because there's a lot to break down. There's we we talked about it a little bit. Week and there'll to week. be even more to talk about next week. But next week we'll be able to talk about not only the series, but how we think it's going to move forward into Doctor Strange 2. What if Jimmy Woo's Mephisto? 